Welcome back to the Thrifty Food Plan channel, friends. If you're new here, I'm Jay, and I am sort of the facilitator creator of this little YouTube community. I'm so glad everyone is here. This video is gonna be a little different than my normal content. And uh, way back in November uh, 2022, I did a YouTube short about the fact that food and grocery companies were price gouging. And what that means is they were elevating their prices even though there was no reason for them to do that. Like the cost of doing business was flat or coming down, and yet they were continuing to charge higher prices. And over the last couple of weeks, um, there have been a series of articles in the New York Times <clears throat> that indicate that that is happening again. And I just want to talk with everyone about it. Now, I do want to acknowledge that for some of you, the New York Times uh, may be to you a biased liberal news source. <clears throat> um, I guess I would just say this video is about food and grocery prices. It is not about like the Trump indictment. And so I hope you will stick with me despite <laughs> um, the primary sources uh, for this video, which I will link down below. So I'm just going to read a couple of quotes um, from these recent uh, New York Times stories about what is happening. So, quote, corporate profits have been bolstered by higher prices, even as some of the costs of doing business have fallen. Now, cost of doing business, you know, into and through the pandemic, right, we saw huge sort of increases in things like oil costs and well, not oil costs during the pandemic when we all couldn't drive, but when those recovered, they kind of went through the roof. Transportation costs, you remember like all the infrastructure kind of shut down during COVID. Um, sort of the, the base level of like food ingredient costs were higher, some labor costs were higher, raw materials were higher. The war in Ukraine has driven up prices of some things um, given the global nature of our economy. But like all of those factors are getting better now. And there is a report, I think, that comes out from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, like the product price index, something like that, which is indicating that prices to produce things are leveling off or coming down. And so, you know, we are in a situation where prices theoretically should be falling. But what is happening instead is that companies are continuing to increase their prices. Quote, yet many big businesses have continued raising prices at a rapid clip. And quote, some of the world's biggest companies said they do not plan, plan to change course and will continue to keep costs at elevated levels. In some cases, quote, fewer sales, they're having fewer sales but they're charging higher prices. And this is how they are protecting their profit margins. So let's just look at a couple of these big food conglomerates and sort of what they are doing price-wise, after which we will talk about how to protect ourselves from this price gouging. All right, first up is PepsiCo, who makes a large number of like chip brands and snack brands, they run some fast food restaurants. They, they have some breakfast food brands like Quaker, including my beloved Quaker Oats. And they have a whole bunch of beverages. So if you buy bottled water, if you buy Tropicana orange juice, you buy Lipton iced tea, like Gatorade, like look at all these brands that are part of PepsiCo. They are not just Pepsi-Cola. So what we know is going on with PepsiCo is that they have increased their prices by 16%. And this is for the quarter that ended March 31st. Price is up 16%. They have seen their sales go down about 2%. So some of us consumers are choosing not to buy their products at that new price point. But it's working at scale because PepsiCo profits are up 18%. 18%. Nestle, they've increased their prices 9.8%. And this is not just like Nestle hot chocolate. It is your 
Stouffer's lasagna. It is your Purina pet food. It is your Perrier. Lots of brands are part of the Nestle Corporation. Their price is up almost 10%. Look at Unilever. Look at all these brands that are part of Unilever. I mean, I, I like Hellman's mayonnaise to Bertoli pasta to Slim Fast. It looks like they own Lipton too. I don't know who owns Lipton right now. Looks like maybe it's changed owners over time. But your ragu pasta sauce, your your Pond's face cream, look at all this, all part of Unilever. And they have increased their prices 13.4%. Now let's take a look at Colgate Palmolive, uh, which does a lot of household and personal items. Uh, everything from your soft soap to your toothpaste to your Kleenex, science diet, pet food, the Murphy soap oil that I know some people use to clean their hardwood floors, all of this stuff, even Tom's, Tom's brand. What's going on with Colgate Palmolive? 12% increase in their prices. Some of their consumers are pushing back and not buying their products anymore. So their sales have gone down 2%, but their profits have gone up by 6% over the same period. So even though some of us are choosing not to buy their products anymore, they're gonna keep their prices high because they've increased profits. So one of the other quotes from the New York Times reporting is that, you know, customers are grumbling about the higher prices. Uh, and in some cases, <clears throat> we keep buying the stuff, right? Um, so while for a couple of those big conglomerates, you saw sales decline, um, enough people are continuing to buy their products at skyrocketing prices uh, that they continue to make skyrocketing profits. Um, now, not all of us are choosing to play that game with them and keep their profit margins huge. <laughs> so across the New York Times reporting, there were a couple of strategies um, that regular people like you and me are adopting to sort of protect themselves against the price gouging. So let's just talk through those. So first, Many of us are stockpiling when items are on sale and we are buying kind of more staple foods and doing more scratch cooking. So, you know, one of the articles had an example of, you know, a mom who had bought chicken on a deep, deep discount and stockpiled it in her freezer so that she could feed her family chicken going forward. So kind of that stockpiling on sales and doing a little bit more scratch cooking, you know, with with ingredients. The second thing um, that folks are doing is, you know, we are avoiding buying all of the packaged food, that Stouffer's lasagna, just not buying it anymore. Doritos, not buying it anymore. And if we are buying it, we're buying like one bag of Doritos instead of three. Right. So you might buy processed food, but you're going to buy less of it and you're going to treat it as a treat, not as a regular grocery staple. So tip two is to avoid the packaged foods, which are the foods that all of these companies produce. The third is something that you see me do a lot. I know you all do it a lot, which is to buy the cheaper uh, generic products. So I don't buy sort of the branded beans. I buy the storehouse beans, for example. Now, the fourth thing that some people are doing to protect themselves from the price gouging is that they're just allocating more money to their grocery budgets. For some of us, that might be an option. For others of us, it's not. So the New York Times is reporting that kind of consumers are adopting four strategies to deal with the price gouging. We're stocking up on sale items, buying more things for more whole foods for like scratch cooking. We are avoiding 
buying packaged foods and when we do we buy one we don't buy three we treat it as a treat not a staple we are buying uh, cheaper generic foods and brands and then finally some of us are just allocating more to our grocery budgets if we can so I, that, that's what the New York Times is reporting um, kind of folks are doing to deal with the price gouging I'd love to hear in the comments below um, if everyone could share some of the tips that that you are using, some of the strategies you're using to deal with price gouging and the continued increasing increases in, in some of you know the items at the grocery store. Uh, everybody in our community would benefit from your best thinking, so please do take a moment to drop your top strategies and tips down below to help all of us kind of grapple with the price gouging that is continuing to happen on food, personal, and household care items at our grocery stores. Thanks for listening to my little rant and um, do hit that like button, do subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the things you can to help this little YouTube community. And again, please share your strategies below. I know that I will benefit from your best thinking, and I believe everyone else in the community will too. Thank you so much for visiting.